folks, Joseph A. Sabora here, and I'm doing a movie review this week. It's a sci-fi thriller that came out on July 27, 1990, and was later released nationwide on August 10th, which, surprisingly enough, had became the number one box office that weekend, earning $61.5 million out of its $26 million budget. I'm talking about the thriller Flatliners. A story about what was it like if you experienced death, which features a young and fresh cast, includes Kiefer Sullivan, who just came from the film The Lost Boys, and several others, yeah, which of course was directed by Joe Schumacher, who have directed this movie as well. Julia Roberts who was a rising star with films like Steel Magnolias, Mystic Pizza, Satisfaction, and of course, the successful box office smash, Pretty Woman, which came out in that same year. William Baldwin, Alec Baldwin's uh, brother. Kevin Bacon, who's been best known for Footloose and several other films that he did back in the 80s, and Oliver Platt. This was the original Lazarus Effect. Yeah, I should say this because that film pretty much borrowed all the elements from this movie. And yeah, that was a film that starred Olivia Wilde uh, from the TV show House, MD. And sadly, it was one of the worst horror films I've ever watched. I mean, this movie was so much better than that. Also, this movie is destined to have another pointless remake, which I just found an article about that, and they actually had chosen Ellen Page from Juno and uh, Whippet to star in. And you just can't do this. It had a great cast already, why remake this? In fact, this movie had mixed reviews from critics. It had a 48% on Rotten Tomatoes, which I think it deserves a lot higher than that. In fact, it should have been like, I believe, 64 or even 70. It would have made sense. Because, yes, the film did have its problems, but still. It was indeed a well-made, intelligent thriller. And I know Roger Ebert had agreed, too, <laughs> when he did the review of the film. So, so yes. And by the way, this is um, a Blu-ray re-release by Mills Creek Entertainment. It has the original poster art, the one that I remember the most. Because when Sony had released this first on Blu-ray... And yes, they have the same transfer as before. They had a different cover art where they just only showed Kiefer Sullivan, Julia Roberts, and Kevin Bacon. All three of them on this one generic cover art. Yeah, it kind of stinks still, too. But I'm glad that Mills Creek had restored the original cover art that they used in movie posters. Because that's exactly what I remembered where they just show an all-star cast right there in a blue light. And you can see the back right here. <laughs> this has a different uh, picture of Kiefer Sullivan that's right near the, uh, the Gothic uh, University yeah, that shows the gargoyles on the side. So Perfect shot right there. So that's exactly what it looks like. Yeah. <laughs> There's an awesome cover art that's on the Blu-ray. It's pretty much the same anyway <laughs> as the back. So let's get to the film. It stars Kiefer Sullivan, Julia Roberts, Kevin Bacon, William Baldwin, Oliver Platt, Kimberly Scott, Joshua Rudoy, Benjamin Moulton, Hope Davis, Patricia Butcher, and Beth Grant. 
It's written by Peter Filardi and it's directed by Joe Schumacher. The movie began set at La Loya University of Chicago in Chicago, Illinois, a very gothic like university filled with gargoyles and lots of um, creatures around. We meet Nelson Wright, who's played by Kiefer Sullivan, who convinced four medical students, Joe Hurley, Dave Labaccio, Randy Stucco, and Rachel Manis, all played by William Baldwin, Kevin Bacon, Oliver Platt, and Julia Roberts, to discover what lies beyond death. But to do so, Nelson decided to create an experiment to stop the heart, producing a flat line graph on the heart monitor signal. So Nelson was the first one to try that for only one minute before all of his students had revived him. And when he was dead, he experienced a vision when he was a child bullying a kid named Billy Mahoney, who's played by Joshua Rudoy, which unfortunately he died after that happened. When he finally came back to life, he tells his friends that he can't describe what he saw, but it was there until all of a sudden he winds up experiencing hallucinations of Billy Mahoney and the dog that he once had which this is where it gets worse he starts getting beat up by Billy so now that Nelson had experienced it they decided that all the other students wanted to try this out for themselves so first it was Joe who had his erotic afterlife experience filled with nothing but girls sexy girls that he basically just hangs out and and videotapes them, you know, having sex. He agrees with Nelson's claim that something indeed does exist. And then Dave decided to join in too, and he wants to have seen a vision of a girl that he once bullied, a black girl named Wendy Hicks, who's played by Keisha Reed. And and once all three men had experienced vivid hallucinations that's related to their afterlife visions suddenly Rachel wanted to try this out yep and this is where it gets worse because when Rachel tries to do it after they all have the power went out hoping that they were gonna bring her back but she was already in her deep sleep and she dreamed about that when she was a little girl um, her father, who was a Vietnam War veteran, had committed suicide. All four of them, with the exception of Randy, the only solution to prevent these hallucinations was to confess and apologize for what they had done when they were young. Yeah, for instance, Dave's solution was to go to Wendy Hicks, who's now an adult and has one kid and married to her husband, to apologize for making fun of her while Rachel under and deep hallucination was to go into the bathroom and apologize to her father and then Joe however already you know dreaming about all these uh, girls that he hang out with you know watching all these uh, videos footages that they played on the TV even his camera and all these girls started uh, visiting him somehow wants up um, breaking up with his fiance who's played by uh, Hope Davis so Nelson is the one to actually prevent that from going down into that experiment again to face Billy Mahoney who's already been dead so now He'll forgive him for what he did. This was indeed a well-made thriller. It has a dark atmosphere towards it. It feels more like a horror film rather than just um, 
a sci-fi thriller in some ways yeah and in fact it actually has um, some vivid color temperature that they use for the film that's uh, well done by um, cinematographer John DeBont who went on to direct the film Speed yeah there, there was some like beautiful shots of red and blue some black and white photography on on the shots of uh, of Joe's uh, afterlife dream nothing but beautiful and sexy woman around uh, a beautiful uh, cinematic shot of of a bunch of kids chasing the Billy around just when Billy was about to go up on the tree and of course he fell off along with the dog and they both got killed and there's even shots of the Rocky Mountains you know what uh, Dave had experienced uh, before he went in s into um, a dream where he actually made fun of you know, a black girl you know and it was you know exactly what was going to happen I mean and then all these uh, strange hallucinations that went into the film really really intense though but it was very well made um, definitely a great cast too and well, with Kiefer Sullivan who did a great job playing Nelson Wright I mean I never forget that line today is a good day to die <laughs> well, that line's been spread on several movies and TV shows but but uh, th this was the line I remember the most in, in this movie. William Baldwin did a great job playing a cocky playboy. You know, who's just doing what he does best. You know, filming you know sex videos with all the girls he meets, and even though he was ready to be married by his fiance, and that didn't work out, as since his fiance just found out about it. Julia Roberts, you know, just came fresh from those movies, uh, like Pretty Woman and all that. Did a great job, too, um, being that this was her first thriller that she's been in, because the very next year she went on to do the film Sleeping with the Enemy, yeah, which didn't do much uh, to my taste. I mean, yes, it did do okay at the box office, but it just wasn't as good as uh, as this one. But still, I, I thought she did a great job too. I mean, I mean she was very, uh, she knew exactly what she was experiencing since uh, being the doctor herself. I mean, I remember she had to talk to um, one of the patients, uh, the older patient, who were already talking about um, the afterlife. You know, like they're trying to see a big bright light that they saw and hoping that they were going to go straight to heaven that maybe this this experience that they had was going to be a chance of a lifetime Oliver Platt um, was also good too as the basically their friend and teacher even though it is kind of a shame that you know we never get to see his near-death experience the same way that they have and yeah I, I always wanted to know about that but I guess he seems to me like he's he didn't want to try that himself. Yeah, Kevin Bacon did a great job too, um, playing Dave. I mean, because now we know how how he felt uh, when he bullied a kid, same way that uh, Nelson had done. Yeah. So and also had a wonderful score by James Newton Howard, you know, who has done some great scores of other movies. Uh, this one had like a. Uh, very eerie um, soundtrack that just feels just at the right pace when when you started seeing all these scary scenes right there yeah it was uh, very intense at times yeah it really is um, it did have its flaws too I'll, I'll give you that um, there were shots where um, where we started seeing the Wendy Hicks uh, curse scene when Dave was uh, at the subway train and and he saw her and you know spooling out all those uh, horrible words uh, that's coming right in her mouth and then there's um, other scenes too like where you just saw Billy just beating the shit out of Nelson 
as he kicked him in the nuts and and hitting his face with a hockey stick and that that seemed to go on too it's like he's like Nelson was trying to get away from him by locking himself up in his room and you know, just so Billy doesn't show up but no matter what he does <laughs> he shows up anyway <laughs> he just keeps beating the shit out of him other than that though it's it's a great film it, it's definitely worth watching and I recommend it and I think it's a shame that this Blu-ray didn't have any extras but neither was the previous releases that Sony put out like the the DVD and uh, the original Sony Blu-ray release which only had uh, the 5.1 audio sound and all that which this one only has just one English audio yeah the original Blu-ray had uh, the French and, and Spanish with 5.1 sound and the transfer is pretty much the same but sad to say they could have provided a better transfer for this release because then I think this would have blowed the, the previous release away if only they have added all the audio options and maybe added some new featurettes or something like that I think the film would have been better but otherwise um, that's okay Yeah, I also think the film is very underrated too because this movie should be talked more but that's how I felt. So anyway, I give Flatliners four stars. I'm Joseph A. Sabora, and I'll see you later. Bye.